So today's a really big deal at the farm. The new batteries have arrived. I've bought two of these 32 kilowatt batteries from Fogstar, fresh off the boat. As far as I'm aware, I'm the first or if not one of the first customers to actually receive these because they're a brand new design. So bigger power pack is basically what they are. The other batteries they've done are half the, half the uh, capacity so far. So this is now a massive 32 kilowatt pack. Well packaged, that's for sure. I thought it might come with a data cable or something, but I wasn't expecting it to come with actual connection leads. The wheels come locked, so I'll just make sure they're up. <sighs> it's not happening. We're on the floor. So that's both the batteries inside now. It's going to be a few days till the guys are actually here to install them and swap them out for these couple. These BYD batteries are about six years old now and they still work 98% I think it is. Blue Fix are here to sort the batteries. The only other thing they brought is a couple of these. First little challenge, got to cut these door frames out. Just boot it out of the way. So we're just about ready. Power's going to go off any second. Oh no! There we go, some light. Ah, this is the isolator for this one, is it? Yep. For the DC side of the solar. Yep. So make sure everything's off. <laughs> yeah. Be a good start. No one wants to get electric. Don't want to go bang. No. They actually turn off in here as well. There's like a little. Where is it? There's a little, there it is. Look, you see it, the on off just here. Look, look. Yeah. here, look, yeah. These are an absolute nightmare to, to get back on if you do. So when that fuse went, yeah, it was an absolute nightmare to get the actual main system back on because you had to cycle these batteries in sequence to give that computer system enough power and time to boot up and before it recognized the batteries again. Right. It was a nightmare. Kind of hoping these ones don't need a similar thing because <laughs> they've got a bit more yeah, technology in them. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is meant to yeah. as well, but didn't seem to want to communicate until that had time to gear in. But then these have some sort of self-regulating thing where they just instantly turn back off if they don't recognize being part of a system. Right. I'm guessing it's a safety feature. Yeah, a feature for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So you stand, stand any ones on these plates? Or do you just go directly on the floor? They can go on the floor now. Yeah, they can, can't they? Because they've got, they got... This is just insulate. Basically, yeah. they're a much bigger block of battery, aren't they? They're like yeah. a solid thing. Yeah. So that was what worried me about all the airspace in this, is more the winter time when it was cold. Yeah. So I think these ones will be the opposite way. I'll be fretting in the summer, getting fucking fans in here in the summer, rather than I won't be bothered in the winter. Now. I thought, I want to say they've got some sort of self-heating thing in them as well, maybe. Yeah, some of them do. Yeah. yeah. For this one, for the ground oh, ten. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Mm. What are you two? You're touching a metal ladder behind you? Maybe you're grounding somehow? Oh. I'm guessing all this unplugging of BMSs and stuff is just all internal on these new ones, isn't it? So it's no yeah. faff. Literally all the yeah, it's all the same thing. It is just the case, it's having the, the ready to go big block compared to this came in like three boxes then you got to build it yeah so it's, it's like it was like it's like an expensive self-build almost exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah flat mate you'll never get but yeah so those ones everything's all in the box these are 
got you know you got you got a separate like can bus the separate BMS. It's crazy. And something that I spotted that these ones don't have as well is just some sort of little exhaust fan for, for cooling the computer bit, which yeah. just makes total sense. Yeah. I've only ever had these up to like 32 degrees a couple of times, but they do not like it. Yeah. They instantly drop the charge to about two kilowatts or something you can yeah. put in max. Take the, uh, pull the, the thing out if you want. These come out, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep, just pull it. It's, it's, yeah, it'll come. There you go. <laughs> because it melted slightly so it's a tight fit now a bit warm. yeah yeah it originally had a 300 amp fuse in it and then i think i did two or three charges one winter day and it popped yeah and then i swapped it for a 400 amp fuse and the old guy turned the rating down right and that seemed to be fine for ages and ages and ages and then said so to mark before there was christmas time same sort of thing happened. We'd done about 10 loads of washing. There was loads of ovens on, power shed, like loads of people here, loads of cooking, loads of stuff for yeah, Christmas, yeah. basically. Yeah. And it popped again on Christmas Eve. Because, oh, like, again, it was like four charges in a day on the generator or something silly. Well, we leave to come in the BMX. Back to this light. Let me just take the chill button back. There's a little tip. First bit of the battery coming out. As you can see, each one of these old ones is only just about seven kilowatts worth of power in each one. That's why two men can carry one of these things. Whereas this big boy, not a chance of all four of us picking this up. As the weight pretty much does directly correlate to how much power it can store because the big block of metal inside there, the heavy stuff, is what actually stores your power. That's the last bit of the battery coming out. I can't believe we've got so much room in here. I forgot how much space there was. These things are massive, the old ones. I said in another video, these new ones are twice the power and smaller. Now all this stuff's been took apart. You can actually really see the damage that was done to this fuse box when one of them popped on me before. This uh, fuse breaker box is getting eliminated now, though, because the batteries have got basically this thing on themselves. They're... Um... A bit dusty, aren't they? different to that, or do they look... So just a quick explanation for the missus and child. These batteries, as you can see here, are all sort of in pieces, yeah? Yeah. This is the same thing, but slightly different cells condensed down into this computer-looking thing. Yeah. So it is basically the same thing, but with more battery, basically compressed yeah. into something that's a bit more yeah. modern. <laughs> So as part of the system upgrade, we're also swapping out the old control unit for a more modern version. This is the old colour control system on the first GX devices that John did. Um, and it's now superseded by the Servo, which has got a lot more inputs, but more powerful and has a touch screen to it as well. Nice. And gives the separation of the computer system from the plugins, which is... Yeah. The bit of the downfall with this, isn't it? It's all a bit yeah. tight in the back, basically. Yeah, that's right. Everything it? seemed a bit loose in there when I had a look at it myself yeah. because it's like everything's had to bend yeah. over time to quite frequently. One of these you take them out and these will fall off, yeah, happened all the time. But the server, they just sit in the yeah. top of it, more ideal, isn't it? Yeah, we've got to add in this breaker in between the inverters that's and the battery. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first one in, it pretty much just connects from there to the bus bar. Where's your whole Jordic one? He's in London now. Oh, is it? Mm. Yeah, I'll put a bit more. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, bit more. Not screen yet, we won't show you a bit. Yeah. So this is the Serbo that's replacing the old screen system. This has got a separate screen. Like I was saying, everything goes in there nice and properly now. There's no bending of any of the ends. As you can see some of them a little bit twisted from when they were pressed up the back of the old one. Let's 
Yeah, a little wheel crap. Yeah. Oh, city guard. Yeah, city guard. Is it stuck on the lip? Yeah. Do you need me to help do it? Battery going in. It's a good job to put them on wheels, really, isn't it? No. Oh. <laughs> Four, eight, five, one. You put that in. Yeah. Well, you've got that one in one. Oh, one, yeah. One. Uh -huh. Two. And then come on. Can. Now, if this is going to be bashing. No, that one's two. And that should go to the can. Turn the car back. Yeah. Don't hurt the chassis. Did you bring legal tent in there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's in back of the house. Okay, it's fine. What do you need? Now it's just a case of tightening up the actual battery cables to the batteries and connecting them to the bus bar and in theory from this point on we should be able to switch it on and it should just work. And it's the first time I've ever seen batteries come with the cables that you need and they've come with a pretty decent length cable so we've got more than enough room to be manoeuvring the batteries around and still connect them to the bus bar no problem. And as I mentioned in a short I've done, I've already found out they are already better quality cables than I had previously. 30% state charge. And make sure we... Coming back. Oh, it's all switching on. Yeah, so this is already a test of the situation before when the batteries yeah. wouldn't... Yeah. And these ones? Yeah. Not there yet, is it? No. Let's see. Not sensing it yet, maybe. So that's it. We are back up and running. New batteries installed. All the face plates can go back on everything now. Make it all safe again so we can't be touching things we're not meant to touch and all that. Including the bus bar, which obviously needs to have its face plates on. I've had them off for months. All right. So batteries are in. Fully operational. We've almost got them up to full charge. As you can see, we've been cooking for a little bit as well now. So we knocked the edge off the solar input and we're not going to quite get to 100% today. Oh, as I'm speaking, looks like the oven has just gone off. And it's high-powered items like the electric oven is pretty much why I've decided to get these bigger batteries. I do quite like this screen on the front of each battery. So you can monitor each one separately. You can see each charge input going into each one and then obviously you can see the main charge so it's going to be a good way to sort of monitor that each battery is working relatively the same and obviously with the temperature and all of these different little bits of monitoring i can do i can see if one battery starts to drop out of uh, sync of the other one slightly and they do have a little balancer at the back can we just about see that no i can't quite see it from this angle but basically the little balancing button, you click it on for 24 hours and then it'll level the two out again. And I do quite like having this new screen as well. As you can see, it is quite a bit different to the old one. It's a lot bigger for a start, but we've got a few different options which simplify everything now. Basically straight into all your different things, dead easy that you can uh, need to change. And then on the overview thing, obviously same sort of setup as before that it had. But there's a feature that I just really like, basically that one there. Bosh, you want to start your generator? Bosh, done, straight away. Before, you would have to go into the settings and then do all sorts of faff, basically, to be able to make sure that you can turn your generator on and off. Something that I wasn't expecting about these batteries, though, is how small they would be for how much power is in them. And that leaves me with all this space here now. So I had anticipated getting a couple more if the glamping site thing does okay and we need a couple more hot tubs, etc. And now I've got the room for them. I reckon I could actually get four more in total if I needed all that juice. But if I go above four, it is going to need an upgrade to the bus bar because there's only another room, enough room left. Because there's only enough room left in there for two. This battery, if we were just running the household, is more than enough for like two or three days worth of running with actual zero input now. So we're on 95%. I'll try and get a little shot in the morning before I finish this video, but I'm a bit of time pressure to get it done. The rough test we did 
it dropped about 15% in 12 hours. So that's a hell of a lot of juice I've got stored. As we actually got this operating last night, so to speak, and this is the full day that we've had with it turned on and all working. Guys, we're tweaking a few things with the system, generator input voltage, that sort of stuff. But we're all up, or up and running, and we've had cloudy weather today. Otherwise, yeah, this would be at 100%. We've still been getting average of about 3 kilowatts coming in, though. So we've charged a hell of a lot of juice off the sun we've had today, which usually would have gone to waste with the old batteries. Off the current solar, these ones would have been charged by about 12 o'clock usually, even on a cloudy day. Obviously, that leaves a lot of power on the table. And I think if I do go down the route of getting another four of these batteries or another two, give myself almost 200 kilowatts worth of power, I've got 17 kilowatts of solar at the minute. I am going to want to increase that also so we can actually try and get a full charge out of a massive battery in one day. Now, I've got a hell of a lot of roof space on the house and the barn where I can put panels on. And you can actually do a thing in the UK with no plan permission and put them in a temporary ground mount. It's something that's not fixed to the ground. They're pretty much like skis for them to sit on. Or you can make something out of pallets. There's a few different ways to do it. But pretty much I'm probably going to throw another solar array in before winter if I can afford to get one done. Now, these are the cheapest, biggest batteries you can currently get in the UK. 32 kilowatts for three and a half grand. That is an absolute steal, in my opinion. The nearest other ones are much more expensive. Those BYDs cost me almost twice as much six years ago. And don't get me wrong, BYD are a fantastic battery. They're a solid battery. They come with 10-year warranty, whereas these only come with a five-year warranty. But, like I say, more expensive and... Slightly older technology now in those batteries, these newer batteries, numerous things we've gone over in this video that are better about this all-in-one unit that you can get now. But get rid of the current batteries on eBay or something. They'll probably go to someone who's got a much smaller system. Nothing like this because obviously you're going to be going straight to batteries like this if you want big power now. I'll probably sell them at a pretty decent discount though, to be honest. Obviously they are used. And the price of the batteries you can get now means that I won't be able to sell them for more. Otherwise, people are just going to go and buy one of these instead, aren't they? I had considered raffling them, though, to one lucky subscriber, so to speak, but it's one of them. Need to recoup some of the money I've spent on these batteries, especially if I'm going to aim to get more solar or more batteries before this winter. Now, I have actually managed to get people a bit of a deal on these batteries because, obviously, I've got a fair few followers now. So if you're actually looking for a Fogstar brand-new battery, Heading over to my website, £100 off on there compared to the Fogstar website. But obviously, if you want to just order them through Fogstar themselves, get the direct shipping and all that, go ahead and do it. But if you do buy them from me, obviously you save a touch of money and I get a little bit of money too. So, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed seeing the install of these big uh, 32 kilowatt Fogstar batteries come together. Tied together with a nice new little faceplate model rather with the servo rather than the old uh, control panel. Had its faults, as discussed. Yeah, if you have, don't forget to give this video a like and let me know if you've got a system or if you're considering getting some of these batteries or anything like that. Until next time then, bye-bye.